All right, guys, if you're here, I'm assuming that you want to start to get into rattlesnake hunting. You're, you're beginning to rattlesnake hunt, something you're interested in. Um, I'm going to kind of go over some of the basics that you need to get started. Um, obviously, most important would be a way to handle the snakes. A lot of guys use a hook like this. It's probably three foot or so long. Um, you can get these online on Amazon. Uh, any place online that sells a snake hook, roughly three foot is what you're looking for. This is, this is what they call snake tongs. Um, a lot of guys don't like using these as they can damage the snake. But uh, as you squeeze this lever on the end here, you can see the, uh, the end grasp here. It's kind of to grab the snake. A lot of times guys will wrap electrical tape around the, uh, the metal part up here so they don't damage the snake. That's why a lot of people try to steer clear of these because you can damage or hurt the snake with these. And uh, that's obviously not the goal. Next up would be a measuring tape. In Pennsylvania, where I'm located, they have to be 42 inches long before you tag the snake or kill the snake or whatever you want to do with the snake. It has to be 42 inches long for you to keep it. So you're going to need a way to measure the snake before you do anything with it, really. Once you decide to tag a snake or keep a snake, you're going to need a way of transportation. A lot of guys will use a pillowcase. This is an actual like snake bag with a drawstring top. Um, that works just fine. The pillowcase works just fine. If you want to go above and beyond you can get a bucket here um, this is a bucket I have with a screw top lid that way the snake cannot get out I mean once you get that rattlesnake down in there you screw this lid back on he's not getting out of that um, I guess we skipped a step here in order to measure the snake you got to get it in a tube um, they have different size tubes this is a smaller tube, this is a larger tube. The smaller one we use for copperheads, or you know, not, not too often are we using this for rattlesnakes. Um, this is the next size up here. These are just fluorescent light bulb tubes. You can get them at Lowe's, Home Depot, anywhere that sells uh, lighting supplies like that. Just fluorescent light bulb tubes, you buy them, they come double this length, we cut them in half, and you actually get two tubes um, per, per one, and they're not very expensive either. You need the tube to get the snake in the tube to measure it which we will go over that here later this video. I think those are the basics. Obviously, if you're in Pennsylvania like I am, you're gonna need a venomous snake permit. Um, but besides that, you're good to go. So I will catch up with you guys here in a minute when I start looking for snakes. All right, guys, as I walk towards the first spot here, uh, excuse my breathing, I'm a little out of breath here, but uh, kind of go over the time of day that you can find rattlesnakes the easiest. Um, there is no right or wrong answer, really. I'll be honest with you, they're, they're a lot easier to find in the morning. I have to work today, so it's, you know, 5 p.m. or so, and I'm out here after work. Is it the best time of day to find them? No, but you never know. You can still find them. I've found plenty of this time of night. Um, but morning is definitely your best bet. Uh, I'd say first thing in the morning, you know, between 7 8 a.m., a lot of those things are coming out and uh, finding the rocks, getting on top of the log piles. Uh, anywhere where they can get that first bit of morning sunlight, in an open area seems to be where they hang out at um a lot of people talk about our rocks better our logs better um i always tend to have a little more luck with rocks however i've also found plenty of snakes in logs there's no real right or wrong answer just kind of see what in your area they seem to like um once i get to some better looking snake habitat here i will uh i'll show you guys what that looks like and what i'm looking for um if you find snakes of any kind there, you got a good chance of finding rattlesnakes. Obviously, you have to be in the right area of the state and uh, in the right elevation. But for the most part, if you're finding garter snakes, black snakes, anything like that, there's a damn good chance that there's also rattlesnakes in the area as well. Um, once I get up here, I will show you what I'm looking for. But uh, time of day, definitely morning is your best bet. And, uh, and I'll show you what I'm looking for here when I go out. Obviously, when you're snake hunting, um, you're going to have to go through some stuff that's not ideal. I like to take my tongs and my hook, trying to push the weeds out of the way as I go. Uh, you can see this is chest-high weeds here we're walking through. And uh, it's not ideal, like I said, but sometimes you get through some of your spots, you get to get off the trail a little bit and uh, wade through some weeds. So, like I said, just move them out of the way first. If there's a snake in the area, a lot of times they will get out of the way. Or you'll come rattling underneath you and uh, then you know to back up all right guys that was pretty close uh, so as I'm walking through the weeds here never rattled there it goes there's one right here see if I can't get them out on the trail 
But this guy was sitting right next to where I was walking at and uh, got a little rattle on him there. He's got all sorts of fungus on his face, on his back. Not a great looking snake really, a pretty small one. Pretty small rattle, you can see he's just kind of curious here what I'm doing. Like I said, he never rattled once. I'm gonna let him go back where he came in here. That is what we're looking for. And that tells me we're in the right area. I'll check in with you guys when I get to the spot. All right guys, we finally made it up here to the first spot after almost stepping on that one on the way in. And uh, this is just kind of what you're looking for, you know, that's a nice open grassy area. It gets a lot of sunlight in here. And you got a lot of these big rocks right here along the edge. Um, you never know, you're just kind of going through picking, looking on top of the rocks, looking at the edge of the rocks. A lot of times the snakes will be under the rocks. Um, if they are underneath the rocks, you legally cannot dig them out. You cannot flip rocks. You cannot flip logs. Um, like I said, this is all in Pennsylvania. Your state might be different, but the snake pretty much has to be exposed for you to legally grab it and pull it out. Um, so your best bet is these big, just so you can see this in here, is just a big rocky area. It's got some, some cover in it also. Um, as I'm doing it, I'm just wearing boots. Tall uh, lacrosse boots. These are not snake proof. Um, they do make snake proof boots. They make snake proof chaps. Um, I feel safe enough in these tall boots. However, some guys definitely prefer chaps or uh, snake proof snake proof boots but we'll just kind of pick our way up through these rocks here um like i said you're getting a lot of sunlight on both sides here it's a south facing slope so it's getting the morning sun and uh we'll just walk up through here and look for some snakes and if i see something i'll uh, i'll turn the camera back on for you all right guys so we just walked straight up through here this is that rocky ravine and as i'm coming up this edge here right over in here there's a big yellow rattlesnake left does not know I'm here yet. I'm gonna sneak up to it and uh, oh, there it goes. All right, guys, this snake has not rattled once yet as I'm chasing through the bushes here. Here we go. Come out here. We'll get a better look at him. But notice he still has not rattled one time. That's why he has not rattled one time. He's got a major, major bruise here on his tail. Let me get you out of this mount here and see if we can get a better look at that. So as you can see here, I'm in this fresh cut field and uh, this is state land. So this is all state owned land. Here's that snake. And uh, you can see there, that is a fresh, fresh mark on his tail. He's trying to rattle his tail, but it's actually chopped off leaving fresh blood on the rocks. This would be a legal snake. I did not tube it. I do not want to keep this snake. Um, however, it's a good sized snake. It's a good colored snake. It's just not what I'm looking for. And uh, like I said, I do not understand. He had to have gotten hit by this mower as they were uh, as they were trimming these weeds. You can see the weed line right, right where he just went in. It's right where he was laying. So I'm guessing he's been hanging out here and he must have must have caught part of that more as I came up through here. All right, guys. When I said I was coming up here, uh, this is the spot that I had in mind. I found those other two snakes on the way here. I'll kind of walk the edge of it here before I actually jump in there. You can see it's just super rocky. I see a rattlesnake from here, actually. There's a black phase one right there. We'll come back for him in a minute. But uh, this entire edge, I mean, it's just boulders stacked on boulders. It's the perfect cover. It's exactly what they're looking for. Um, I just kind of wanted to show you guys this before I dive in there and uh, see what we can find. But if I can see that one from standing out here, I imagine there's quite a few of them in here. So I'll turn you guys back on here in a minute. All right, heading back in here where I see that black one laying. Make sure there's nothing laying here in front of him. He's actually stretched out now. You can see his tail right here. He's probably going to dart underneath this rock. I'm going to take you off here. Take you right down in that hole and see what it looks like. Alright, that was 
not a legal snake. I can tell by looking at the size of it. But uh, give you guys a little elevated view here. This is what we're looking at, and uh, this is just absolutely perfect habitat for rattlesnakes. And they're apparently out right now because we found three in the past five or ten minutes. So I'm gonna shut you guys off, and uh, I'll keep you updated here. Just kind of picking my way out through here. Oh, that one behind me just started rattling again. I know it's tough for you guys to see, but as I'm walking here, I'm kind of looking up ahead of me, checking where I'm stepping at the same time. Biggest key here is to not get bit, obviously. I mean, anytime you're doing something like this, you do run the risk. But, uh, what fun is that if you're not doing it, right? So, uh, we just try to be as smart as possible about it, take all the precautions that we can to be safe as, safe as we can about it. Always watch where you're stepping. And, uh, yeah, a lot of times they will let you know first. They'll rattle before you see them, but that's not always the case. Um, as with that first yellow one you saw in this video, I walked right up to him before he started rattling. Okay, right here's one. There's a big yellow one right down here. You probably heard it before I saw it even. So that is probably a legal snake. Um, I'm not applying a ton of pressure here. I'm just holding on to him. Um, but uh, let me get him in a better spot here. I might tube this one just so you guys can see it. And then uh, once I let him go, I'll show that also. So as I was chasing that one around, which was sitting right here, um, he took off and made it down into here. But as I'm clambering around on the rocks here, I hear something else. And right here, now we're not flipping rocks, we're not moving rocks. I don't know if he'll let me get them out, but right here was another one. Not a legal snake. Just wanted to pull them out and show you guys there. I'm going to put them right back where I got them from. But uh, yeah, this area is just loaded. This is my first time looking in this spot. But uh, so far, I'm very impressed with what I found. To see this many snakes this fast is uh, doesn't happen every time you're out. So I'm going to head back down this way, past where I started, and uh, we'll get to the big boulders down there that maybe you're holding the bigger snakes. So Alright guys, here's another one. This is a small black face. Uh, just laying out in the weeds, you know, laying right on top of this this dirt debris. There's rocks right next to him, but for whatever reason, this one had chose to be on top of the uh, the wood instead of the rocks. I mean, there's no real rhyme or reason to what they do when they do it, but uh, we're going to let him go because he's not a legal snake. This end of the rock pile didn't seem to be nearly as productive. Uh, so they were back in those smaller rocks. I thought maybe there'd be some spread out here in these bigger rocks as well, but uh, you can kind of see these are bigger boulders spread out. The snakes can still get down between them. That's that's the key. I mean, if the rocks are flat to the ground, the snakes don't seem to like them as much. They want to be able to get underneath the rocks if something comes, you know, a predator or a human or whatever it might be. Um, but these big flat rocks with all these crevices, I mean, that is just the absolute perfect habitat you could ask for for these snakes. Um, got a couple more rocks down through here, but I think that's probably it for this spot. Um, it is getting dark. It's getting late. Uh, not the best thing to be doing after dark. Have your stomp around with all these rattlesnakes. So probably try to get back to the vehicle before dark. But um, I will pick around a couple more spots out through here. All right, guys. We'll probably wrap the video up here. I just wanted to show you this before I, uh, before I went. This is just a big area where they stacked a bunch of telephone poles and uh, they're all decayed and rotten now but the snakes do do still use them they get down between them they come up on top of them and sun themselves in the morning and uh, as I was poking around in here I did find this the yellow phase rattlesnake skin it looks like a decent size one obviously this is not the full skin it's just a chunk of the skin but uh you can tell he's yellow phase and you can tell he was decent size judging by the uh the width of his belly scales there but uh, he's not here now, but he was here at one point in time. And that tells you that they also sometimes hang out in wood. Even though most of the other ones we found today were in the rock. So, But, alright guys, I'm going to end the video here. Um, might find one on the way out, but if I do, it's going to be pretty crappy footage of it. So, unless it's a real big one, I probably won't even include it in the video. But, 
just driving out here guys um it is starting to rain it's getting dark pretty quick just wanted to wrap things up um i lost count of how many snakes we did find i don't know it was six or seven somewhere in that area um the one with its tail chopped off from the mower that was interesting i never seen anything like that before um there was actually still fresh blood coming out of its tail so that uh i've never seen that before but either way if you guys like this kind of content um make sure you give it a like comment subscribe um there will be more of this stuff coming soon um, coming this fall, we'll probably have some more fishing videos and uh, hunting videos as well. So, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, see you in the next one.